What up, meatheads? Welcome to the meat block. So, me and David, we're recording in Zoom, and I, I don't sound good. I sound blown out, so I'm so sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to fix that in the future. But regardless, there's a lot of great content and information in this episode. It's all about resumes and super funny anecdotic stories that I tell. Because I'm hilarious. All right, hope you enjoy. Good cutting enhances the quality of good meat. In his way, the meat cutter is an artist. Poor cutting results in an inferior piece of meat, regardless of quality. I'm going to break the ice with this. We have an Alexa at her work. And uh, <laughs> I quietly go up to Alexa and say, like, Alexa, play fart music. And then it starts playing like popular songs, but just with, with farts in them. Really? Yeah. And then like I try to see like everyone at the block will be just cracking up and laughing, and like someone won't get like why we're laughing, and I'll just be like, let's see how long it takes for them to understand what's happening. <laughs> Man, the, the people at my last plant, uh, they always played that goddamn baby shark song. Really? Yeah, man. Well, I, I have a son, and I lived through that, that shit by Pink From, Korean company. They, they, they have a Netflix deal because of that fucking song. And if you listen to the lyrics, a bunch of people get eaten. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. not very American. Not very patriotic. Yeah. So... David and I started recording this episode. Uh, here's a little inside baseball or behind. And we, we, we recorded about 15 minutes that we, you will never listen to. Um, because we wanted to reconnect and really get down to what we were talking about. Because our ideas, like many things in a in a, a team setting, were evolving because we were bouncing off of each other, and we realized what we we're saying in the beginning, like just talking it out, may not be actually how we feel. Yeah, oh. sometimes sometimes writing everything out sounds good, but is not practical. It's there, yeah. but it's not practical. Mm -hmm. And. uh so, uh, I'll let you introduce this episode, David. You, you, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, well, this is kind of like part two, I guess, of last week in a way, because because last week we were or last episode we were talking about, um, you know, how to know when to leave. Mm -hmm. So this this is like okay, you done left. Uh, now what? Now what do we do? Now, now we got rent to pay and uh, uh, just a shit ton of cats to feed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, gotta get some some paychecks coming in. So, so how are we gonna find the next thing? Um, because some, you know, sometimes sometimes you don't have anything lined up. That sucks. Or if you're, you know, a lot of people right now in this industry are coming to the slow season. You know, people may be furloughed. People may not may need to uh, look for other opportunities in the short term or in, in those short, short term opportunities could be long term as well. Um, but how do you take your skill set, all the years of experience, or even maybe one year of experience, put it in a digital or tangible document, hand it to someone and essentially say, please, sir, hire me. Here's a piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. That's a good question. I mean, you know, I think that there's, I think there's what resumes look like 20 years ago and what they look like now. So when I was, I, I, I sent you my resume yesterday to, to check out uh, because I was, I have a new software that I just mess around with. Um, and actually, I need someone needed it for a consulting job, and I was like, "Well, I don't like how my current one looks." And uh, 
my original resume that I came across with like only one place experience had a paragraph long of that me working in that one place, really selling myself, really being super esoteric with terms, not talking about any company growth or anything like that. And it was a uh, single space document where I had to push in every tab, it, getting the, making it look aesthetically right took longer than creating the, the material that went into that, that single piece of paper. Yeah. I, I mean, I've spent a lot of time being hung up on, uh, and the language I use and like trying to appear. I don't know. So I, some certain level of, of professionalism or business acumen that I think exists because of vocabulary or something. So I'm like sitting there with a thesaurus, right? Going through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I think, I think there's, I think there's a, a more genuine way to put together a resume that doesn't, that doesn't really have to be this, this like super terrifying experience. I mean, mm -hmm. you, I, I read yours just since we've been talking and, and, uh, it's good. I mean, it's, it's to the point. There's no, uh, there's no fluff there. Mm -hmm. it, it clearly describes that you're a professional and you, what, you know, you know, um, I think, I think it's just like, be honest. I think there's a way to even fake it till you make it, but still be honest. If that kind of makes sense. Like, I think, I think you can be like, Hey, this is what I know, but this is what I can do. Mm -hmm. I think you can convince people. Yeah, I think you could pr project your goals, saying yeah. like, yeah, 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 that like this is what I know, and then you have that that conversation, and then like, but my goal is with you is to get you to this point, and da da da, and we could grow together, blah 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 blah. And and I think that you know you can like break that ice in the in the cover letter. Mm -hmm. You know the cover. I fucking hate cover letters. It's so dumb, <clears throat> but it's, it's dumb because I was all, I mean, I, I was like always writing them as this, I don't even know what, like, uh, like I was writing a letter to a judge or something when I was 19. Like, I don't know. I, 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 I don't like cover letters because it's like, you want to write a cover letter, cover letter that has to be specific to this company that you're applying to fuck like, and you have to make it, you essentially have to just fellash this company when you may be doing like 10 resumes or 10 applications that day and you what you want to fucking do all this work and like what, what uh, and companies have this fallacy of like oh this guy he's hiring i need you know this guy really needs this oh he put together this cover letter to this fucking peon da, da, da. it's like yeah that guy needs that you're making him do extra work and he's like you're not the only place he's applied to because he's fucking hungry or he needs something yeah uh, i don't know that's how I feel about cover letters. I, I think it, I think that there are a lot of yes, I agree to so much of that. And and to be honest with you, like when I when I read a cover letter, I I'm not reading about hopes and dreams. I'm not listening to that thing that you did when you were like abroad. I'm not reading about that thing you do on the weekend. Like mm -hmm. I just want to see that you can form a complete sentence. Yeah, you know, that's it. Yeah, I I guess because I have always. Uh, uh, the cover letter is to to me is the stigma of like why do you feel you would be good uh a good fit for company x what do you why do you want to work for company x so you spend this whole time just coggling this fucking company that you just want a job yeah company x company b you know it's just like and then you have to look up that like you, you get this um it's that fallacy of that like people have like people need to be happy in their work or whatever and people are like we can create a good work environment and blah 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 and have this like whole startup attitude about how a job should be and then you read this you see a job posting you say i could do every single thing on that and then the first question why do you want to work for us what do you think and it's like Fuck, because I could do the job. Yeah. And it's like, what about this company makes you want to work here? It's like, dude, who, who wrote this with their dick in their hand? Just like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think, I think just, 
let's let's be bold and just say because I felt I felt that exact same thing too that that intense pressure. Mm-hmm. Let's let's just say, be bold. Let's change the culture around cover letters. No more of that performative shit. Just here's here's who I am. Here's what my goals are. I think I can fit. See ya. Yeah. And, you, and use use like capital letters at the beginning of a sentence and periods. Mm-hmm. And have have your uh, your girlfriend proofread it, or or your mom, like you're in college. <clears throat> That's right. That's right. No, yeah, no, uh, no clip art. Yeah, nothing like that. Uh, the cover letter. Yeah, just just be like, hey, here, here, here's here's what I do. I'm uh, I'm I'm a I'm a meat cutter. I just completed this apprenticeship. I've been at this place for the last year. Mm-hmm. Here's where I want to grow. It seems to me that you have that opportunity, and if you give me a shot uh, to accomplish these goals, I can, I can guarantee you, you're going to have a, a hard ass worker. Don't say ass, a hard worker. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I do a lot more cussing on my, as you know, than the normal person. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of really vulgar uh, uh, verbiage in your resume. I was shocked. Yeah, in my cover letter, like it just says, "like Listen, bitch, you should hire me." I don't mean that in a derogatory uh, way towards men or women. Men can be bitches too. So, well, that that part at the end where you go into that experience that you have with the, that uh, that ritual slaughter. Oh yeah, where, where? it's kind of like wow, that feels like a lot of information. But you know, you gotta. I can't help. The thing is, like people is. You know, we're in this new age, or not even this new age, where uh, people are, we don't shame people for sexual kinks. We don't shame people for, you know, if, if for uh, cock holding. We don't, you know, it, I think it started uh, 30 years ago when Ellen came out on uh, uh, TV that it just opened our eyes to that, like, we have to talk about this. This is what it's like. I get hard when I slaughter, I rub the blood all over myself. And this is, I'm sorry. And I feel I need to put that in a resume because I want them to know exactly what they're getting, why my hands are in my pockets, why my apron is, uh, you know, a little shaped, a little weird and why every once in a while I have to take a 20 minute bathroom break. So it's, I have to lay it out so detailed oriented. There's certain phrases I have to say, there's certain, you know, and then at that point I say, hail Satan and move on to the next carcass. And that's modern transparency. Yeah. That is. And if they don't respect me, um, and what I cert- I feel is in my religious freedom. And... All right, I'm done with this bit. <laughs> I was laughing pretty hard there for a couple yeah. of minutes. Um, and then it stopped being funny. And then I'll pick it back up. And then after that, no, I'm joking. Um <laughs> So, so cover letter. Yeah. Just, just kind of, just, just be you, just be you and tell them what you got and, and, uh, and why you're genuinely, if, if it's like, Hey, listen, this is, this is a place where I think I can get the reps, mm-hmm. uh, a, a good skill set to a great skill set. Then that's what I'm here for. If I, I'm, I'm, I want to work at your company because you do big volume and I want to learn how to be a, in a support role to produce as much poundage as I possibly can. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be a management position. It doesn't have to just, just tell them what you got and what you're there for. Uh, yeah. You're there for something stable because you've got some awesome hobbies and you live on the ocean and have a f- fucking crab boat and stuff. And, and uh, like, a, I'm going to work really hard for 45 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Go fishing. Tell yeah. them that. I should tell them. Um, I'll, all right. So the cover letter. And so let's say it's not even high, hypothetical. When I was first in this industry at one point being in a, a, uh, I had to get another job and, and many people, I, I went about it through different means where I didn't even have to really give a resume. Um, and it, but how does someone who's, let's say, what part of the industry do you want to 
Yeah, it's your first job in the industry. Where, where do these people work? Slaughter, processing. Uh, retail. Where do you think? What? Retail. retail. Okay, they're a retail cutter. Uh, they're, they, they started off not knowing anything, anything whatsoever. Green, uh, working for a, what kind of store? Uh, boutique, uh, wholesale, or like a uh, box store, uh, Safeway. Sure. Whole, Whole Foods. No, okay, a meat depart a store with a meat department. Um, and they've been there for, uh, a year or six months and it's just, and they, they're trying to see what else is out there. It's not like they want to leave, but they're putting together a resume and you worked retail for certainly longer than I did. And you worked in the capacity of a uh, grocery chain. And I, I never worked for a grocery chain. What are the skill sets that you've learned or that other people are learning to put, to possibly get upward mobility in uh, maybe in that company or um, to apply for another position or to start bl- like, maybe they want to leave and be like, fuck this place. I'm not making them enough. But a lot of times I didn't know that I can make more until I push, put it out there. Yeah, I think I think it really depends. It's it, it depends on your audience. Um, it depends on where you want to go. If you want to if you want to climb the ladder in Whole Foods Market or Safeway or whatever, you know, it's it's really important that you uh, are able to kind of drive your own personal development plan and just be like, okay, I see what the I see what management does. I see, mm-hmm. what um, you know here are the holes in my skill set. Like, yeah, I've been a supervisor. I close the shop at night. Um, we've passed all of our, you know, ever clean audits. And, uh, I understand sanitation like the back of my hand, Mm -hmm. Uh, but my production skills suck because we're just selling the back stock all night. And I I really need to know more about this. You know, you just identify what, what's going to make you the most well-rounded person because managers are not subject matter experts. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's probably what got you there, but you don't maintain that. I mean, I'll, there's a bunch of shit that I'm rusty on now. Yeah, but you want to put your rustiness on your resume. Exactly, exactly. So, so, uh, so, yeah. You, but, but you want to you want to identify what if you're if you're gonna if you're looking for upward mobility in that retail setting in the same place. I mm-hmm. think you would identify your blind spots and be really open and enthusiastic about learning those things. I think that's kind of music to their ears. But if you, you know, I, we had talked a little bit about putting together kind of like a, uh, a butcher's toolbox, like a <laughs> some suggestions about where to go. If you wanted to get out of the retail world and you're like, you know, we hear this all the time. Like I've been working at, at Safeway for three, four years. I'm a supervisor. I'm a great cutter. I'm a badass with a knife. I can, you know, my merchandising is top notch. I, keep great logs like but i really want to i really want to move around so what's next what do i do next how do i get out of retail what what do you suggest mm-hmm. what do you suggest cuz my advice is i like fuck i don't know if i would take that advice that's like a lot of work it's like go get it. like because it's often the the question i get is like uh i want to get out of retail i want to do what you want to do i want to work with whole carcass and all that um I'll tell you right now, it it genuinely doesn't pay more. Mm-mm. It genuinely is a lot harder work. And if you work for a smaller place, you're not going to have benefits or the protection of a union. Yeah, yeah that's so true. Um, so at that point, your passion has to outweigh those negatives, uh, which this isn't like a, a coaching episode. It's a resume episode. So I'll get back on track, but let- I, I th- it's, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up. It's relevant. Yeah. You, I think you got to define what results that you're trying to create. Do you, do, do I want to be the fastest butcher on the block? Do I want people to know that I am the best cutter out there and I will throw down <laughs> or are you trying to provide for your family or do you really need health insurance because yeah. you're failing something? Yeah, I guess it is is relevant because I have certainly I took a job uh, for not that much money because the place was 
written about very well in all the magazines and the papers and was like rated the number one this and that and uh and i took it knowing in a year i can put it on my resume yeah totally yep yep um so I mean, there is that you know a lot, a lot of cook friends out there that that have staged for three to six months at a time mm-hmm. you know just knowing um but you know i if i was gonna so like I think about if I could, if I, if I look at what, if I think about what would, what would give you a nice foundation to then specialize? Cause I think everybody should, should specialize and then maybe branch out. But, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like two years, high volume retail, <laughs> one full year, high volume retail supervision, two years, kill floor experience, two years, uh, production cooking in the kitchen. One one full year farm kill or just like custom field kill, two years craft retail butchery, uh, two years processing in like a high volume plant, mm-hmm. high, you know I don't know higher volume, uh, you know maybe a year in value added raw processing. Mm-hmm. I, I mean I think you can double up on a lot of that stuff, but I, th- I think that if you really want to be well rounded, you could pick any of those things and get in there. Yeah. My, if I, if I could tell anybody anything, go from retail to slaughter. Okay. In there. I, I got my start in the, in slaughter. So I had to take, so you were given examples about, you know, words. I don't even know, like green, whatever certification or, uh, what, what was that? Uh, Oh, the uh, it, it, they they have a uh, they have the third party auditors that come in and and do what, like a Sterotech or like a uh... Everclean was uh, I think that Sterotech replaced Everclean or vice okay versa. yeah yeah and then uh, so like in in places I've worked I would say work closely phrasing I would work if I was in slaughter would say work worked closely with. Uh, third party auditors to assure uh company meets standards. You know, I, I would actually phrase I would phrase that better, but essentially that's the point I would get across. Yeah. And then of it. And 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 like you facilitated the results which were also good. Yeah. And then uh with um you know a, in a grocery chain you're chain you're working with local food safety man- municipalities but like uh the health department and the possibly i think the usda maybe comes in like once a year if yeah uh and then the so a meat processing say i i worked on a kill floor for a year i'm trying to get just fill out my first resume i've ever had to fill out and i have no idea what my skill set is. So this may be you, listener. You may be working in a meat processing plant. If you deal with the USDA, you would say the phrase communicate with the USDA on a daily basis um, to ensure uh, food safety standards. If you are part of like, if you're doing titrations of sanitizers, um, of uh, interventions, uh, you know, you could say, um, you know, uh, skilled in uh, titration testing and uh, documenting, you know, results. Uh, it, it, it sounds like it, it's like boasting about stuff that may not be that significant to you or uh, your skill set, but what I see in that as someone who's hiring, I see a few months that I don't have to train people in that. I see a few months of not getting someone up to speed. No, get me wrong. There's going to be plenty of things as far as cutting, as far as other things and paperwork and how stuff looks, but the fundamentals are, are there. Yeah, I think, I think, yes. Uh, I think as, as long as, 
we're being integrous because when I see what, when, when I mean, I don't know, you know how it is when people come in the door and they list a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. then you, you're kind of like, Hmm, really? <laughs> did you, did you do that? And mm-hmm. then, and then like you can, you actually know what they're talking about and can, can kind of validate. Mm-hmm. And then it ends up being kind of like inflated. Mm-hmm. So David has a cat sitting on his lap, and now I see a cat butthole. But what would uh, I? I completely understand people. Uh, it's a delicate dance, but it's like those things about communicating with the USDA. Like you don't want to, you don't want to be like your thing. Be like, "What up, USDA?" Or "How is your day going?" Or like, you know, your communication should be, you know, about food safety, about like you know, uh, proper, uh, filling out things correctly, filling out HACCP paperwork. You may not be HACCP certified. Uh, and if you're not HACCP certified, don't put that you are on your resume because that's just dishonest. Uh, but you may have, um, worked with a, uh, you know, with a HACCP plan or filling out the documents. You may not be at the point where you're, you're, uh, you've read the HACCP plan, but you understand the significance of the CCPs you're doing because a lot of places don't want to teach you those things or don't have the time to te- like to actually go over their 100% food safety program with people that they may view as a quicker overturn. Yeah. Yeah. T- take our advice right now. If you work on a kill floor or in a processing room, but especially on a kill floor and you want to move out, of, of, of your position where you want to move up, read, ask to read the SOPs in the plant, the mm-hmm. programs, the HACCP plans, you know, send us, get, tell them that you want to learn your plan. You want to self-educate. You're going to save them the money. Send us a DM. We'll help you read through it. What, and tell you what to look for, but really get familiar with your CCPs, your SOPs, your SSOPs and your prerequisite programs. <clears throat> and understand them and why you do them and yeah. it translates into what you do on the floor. And if you can wrap your brain around that, which, which you will, that's the sort of thing you want to put in your resume. Yeah. Like, like Travis was saying, uh, the QC job, you know, describing, uh, describing the tasks and whatnot. It, it it's, it's, you, you, I, I think what makes somebody really marketable is when they know what they don't know. If you're just joining us, that's weird because this is a podcast, but we're talking about resumes. And maybe this is a good time to do an ad break. This episode of the Meat Block is brought to you by David Zarling and Travis Stockstill Consulting Company. Message us. Also, I have a Patreon with the American Butcher podcast and how to videos and much more. David does more ambitious consulting and you could email him as well. All of our contact info will be in the show notes. I just did a, a, an ad break. I just made an impromptu ad. Nice. Oh. Uh, yeah, so, so you know, a few things that you want to think about when you're putting your resume together, right? We just talked about uh, talking about your skills and and uh, what you have done and understanding the system with which people use to manage your plant, like understanding how your plants run. That's important. Um, I think also. Uh, I do all. I, I do want to touch on you know how a recruiter re- reads a uh, a resume. So so you and I use LinkedIn. Yeah. Um. I think- and and uh, successfully, I don't. I can't actually say say if anything that I've gone through LinkedIn has made me money. Well, I think I contacted you via LinkedIn the first time. Okay. Yeah. 
I know Indeed has gotten me opportunities, which is like, like just super basic. Yeah, LinkedIn has gotten kind of weird. Um, but recruiters do scour it. Yes, I get hit up all the time by recruiters for jobs I don't take. And and the thing is, is the recruiters they want to see. So you know, here's what a recruiter does. <clears throat> Because I've used them a bunch of times uh, to hire. So they're going to call you and they're going to say, you know, give me the job description. What's the technical stuff? And they're going to kind of listen to that. But but then they're going to say, like, what what are you looking for? Like, what's the ideal candidate behave like? Or what do they do? What are their, what are their qualities? And they want to hear you say stuff like, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm helping hire for a plant, uh, value-added plant right now. We're hiring a plant manager. And, uh, you know, what they, what they need is someone who's a, a, a very good trainer, someone who is a project manager, someone who has some new product, uh, development and realization experience, uh, someone who has some production planning experience. So that's, that's not really a typical, uh, and, and this person also has to be a great team builder and coach. This is a, someone who, who like really deeply has to be involved in personnel development because the, the labor pool is, is non-existent. So <clears throat> the, these are kind of some unique things that you don't always need from a plant manager. And they're looking for those keywords, right? They're going to, they're going to look for those things. And if the, the, the easier that you can make it for th those recruiters to see those words, mm -hmm. the more emails I think you're going to get. And so that's why I like that summary at the top. Yeah. It talks about like what you did as a QC or what you did as, <clears throat> as a, you know, value added department manager or whatever, nighttime supervisor, whatever it is, bunger, all time bunger. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, you know, what you're good at. Uh, remove to hide in a sanitary fashion, uh, ensuring food safety while uh, closing the, the the whatever track. I don't know. Yeah, you know, ran ran uh, <clears throat> you know ran a, a station on a slaughter floor. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, supported producing a, a wholesome product by following GMPs. Uh, SOPs and, and SSOPs and um, <clears throat> I, I, I want to touch on something real quick about this key language which I was talking about um, LinkedIn and not being you know useful for me but it actually is useful in the sense that it, it's, it's brought me like uh, what do you call uh, sponsorships and other random stuff but what it also has done is there are, I have talked to multiple recruiters and they have, those same recruiters will be, have approached me and David about the same job or they already know David or these recruiters are hiring me to work with David. Yeah. Yeah. And because of the language I use, it's just getting me closer to the top i guess oh yeah absolutely yep so, so it's it <clears throat> we're not suggesting to you know like put lipstick on a pig we're not saying like get the th thesaurus out and mm -hmm. use a flowery language to describe yourself we're saying like <clears throat> think about the things that people value in an employee mm -hmm. your approach to teamwork and, and being collaborative uh, your, um, what style of a learner you are, uh, what your goals are, uh, what your, you know, practical and job specific experiences, you know, mm -hmm. like, kind of how you describe like being on a station and, 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 uh, what you do there. Like people just want to know that you understand the job that you're in. Yeah. If people want to understand, uh, but I would also suggest using language that is um, more um, that the recruiter 
is going to understand as well. Yeah. That like, if you're working in a cut, uh, in like a USDA cut and wrap and your job is to run grind and make sausage on your resume, you don't put that you like duties, make grind and ran sausage. You like that means absolutely fucking nothing to a lot of people. But what you, but what you can say is, uh, in a cotton wrap because you have different customers or whatever you can say oversaw um a of i don't know oversaw a um i don't know what line you want to call it but because you know, i just said don't call it making sausage i guess you could say oversaw a uh a sausage line in or no was um Fuck, this is terrible because I just lost it. I might say something like operated a uh, sausage line to customer spec. Yeah, I'm trying to get the word added value product in there too. Yeah, yeah. operated a value added product line, including, you know, uh, not heat treated, shelf stable, heat treated, not shelf stable, for yeah. like, you know, products uh, to customer specification, uh, formulated recipes, uh, scalable recipes, you know, um, are proficient in operating a vacuum sealer, uh, roll stock machine, uh, labeling app, you know, blah, 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 blah. The CCPs that you have to deal with that. Even if you don't know what that means, but you know that like every hour while you're making sausage, you take a temperature and you write down the lot number and put it on a piece of paper, then you are, uh, you know, doing associated uh documentation work that's right that's right um i think that's i think that's really important mm. you know so yeah hey. have some business acumen and, and make it easy to read for recruiters and for technical uh professionals but but um you know being really honest about what you're doing yeah because the the phrase of just like oh as a sausage maker it just hits so much harder when you read it and you read it how we said it and you're like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Not only does this guy obviously know how to make some great sausage and, uh, you know, from this menu source, but he also knows how to convey that in a cohesive way on a piece of paper. Because that's another big thing, too. It's like, it, it's make it, um, you, I think you, you told me once we talked about this in an early episode of uh meat block that you got a resume and you couldn't hire the guy because his return email was like bonger king or some shit like that or yeah or was that the original P- taco pizza 69 it was no 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 P- pizza taco 69 is still going strong no it, it was like it was like yeah it was like uh smoke daddy 420 <laughs> or something i'm just like dude fucking come on man love that guy right. you're, you're never gonna you're never gonna touch anything Dave. <laughs> what job was he applying for he was applying for uh i think it was gonna be a packager but he, i he can't he can't run a swing lead i feel like there's a good sketch a good sketch in there like okay i'm re- I'm recruiting for a HR uh, manager or head of HR. And you're like, all right, so you know how to deal with this. You know, all right, what do you do if an uh, employee has this complaint? How do you solve this inner conflict? All right, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Your emails, I fucking laughing before I even say it. Your email says nofatchick69 at blowjobs.com. You're hired. (laughs) (laughs) Like when the when that 420 guy was writing it down, he looked at it (laughs) and not once he's like, you know what? Maybe I should change my email. Nah. I bet they're pretty cool. It's a, it's a slaughterhouse, dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, well, my brother once had to reprimand someone because it was a holiday and we weren't doing production. Yeah. We we're just doing maintenance work. And they, uh, like, they, they smoked a doobie in the, in the, uh, the holding pins and they're like well we're not working today and it's like uh that doesn't matter like you're like we're not slaughtering but you're still like breaking company policy yeah but yeah oh well the story wasn't as good as the scenario i painted before <laughs> um yeah well tangent well, should we talk about format and aesthetics? Yeah, I think so. So how many resumes do you, I don't see that many. The one I see, the <laughs> I've seen my resume more than any other resume. One, because I'm always trying to make it perfect and trying to make it the perfect document. And where I get, uh, right now I know I need to change it because I looked at it in a print form and I was like, Ugh, I don't like aesthetically how it looks. And like just centering and some metrics and things like that. Those are my hangups as far as what's in there. And there's actually, I'll give you some inside baseball and something on that about how I kind of compiled certain jobs. Yeah. You know, for me, uh, I, I, I just really simple. I just want that short one paragraph cover letter. It tells me mm-hmm. what lights your fire a little bit connect with me, build a relationship, right? It's sales. This is sales. Mm-hmm. Applying for a job is selling yourself, build a relationship. That's the first part of sales. Uh, and then get into the bread and butter on the resume and aesthetically speaking, classic. Like I don't want to see a bunch of colors. I want it, I want it to be black and white. Ugh, mine has color in it, David. Yeah, but it was, but it wasn't like, a, it wasn't like a, but he didn't have, it wasn't a bunch of color though. It was like blue. It was like light blue. and It was dark blue. Yeah. You know, it's 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 like still that that uh, two color sort of aesthetic. It's 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 stark, right? Mm, yeah, it's very very subtle. Yeah. Um, don't you want a picture of the person on the like a headshot? Freaking headshots, and 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 probably because most of us butchers are just ugly sons, of guys. <laughs> just an ugly bunch of people. <laughs> I imagine this HR person putting a headshot of them in like a speedo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no headshots, no headshots. Um, you know, don't get too fancy with a clip art, nothing like that. Just, just have a header, put your contact information, mm. get into, you know, just a, a brief summary, like on LinkedIn, we your summary, right? I mm-hmm. Says something about blah blah blah, blah, blah food professional uh, trained in this and coaches this or like whatever. Yeah. Uh, do your brief summary. Put your list of like what 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 are the things, dude? I like the, I want this list. It's like it's like remember action figures when we were yes. And there was always like some little explosion bubble on the side that was like and now with flexible joints or something. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah that shit at the top okay like like like, you know uh i'm applying for this quality control position i've been an inventory manager for the last three years i'm really you know comfortable with the approved supplier list and the product specifications and the Mm -hmm. program and this and this and this i've managed this and this and this I think this is going to make me great for this job. And then, and then go into the resume. I don't know. I think we covered this in the, uh, in the part that we deleted. So if, uh, but no, no, not this specifically, but what I'm about to say is the gear, your resume, you may have a couple of different resumes for the type of job you're applying to. Yeah. That if you're applying one in the meat industry, uh, what you may be because you're listening to this podcast, then it would, you know, be maybe a little bit more esoteric to that. But if you are applying for a job in a different industry, but you could use the same food safety skill set, you could use, uh, you know, your uh, manager skill set, 
and your, you, you know, what whatever, gear it towards that industry. It doesn't have to be completely different, but instead of just using an esoteric terminology, you can make it a little bit more geared towards that warehouse position that you're gonna that you really want or you get like you know you made it through the rounds of a a a call with a company or you know and they're like oh they're really stoked just send me your resume well you know what that company is looking for and just like maybe just tweak it a little bit i'm not saying sit down hours and customize it for each company but those it's not even a personal touch it's just gonna cut out the bullshit that they don't want to hear it is focus yeah like 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 don't make up shit don't dress it up because you will you will get fucking caught but but like uh highlight what's true highlight this shit like hi, like focus it is that mm-hmm. what you're saying like you like i'm i'm not applying you know i'm if i'm gonna be a, a slaughter floor supervisor or if i'm gonna be a lab tech like i'm gonna apply for both of those positions but the resume is going to look different a little bit. Yeah. And then also, David, it, it, I've experienced this, and I think you have as well, is that there's so much, so many places open in this industry. It's like restaurants. Yeah. They don't last the test of time. Mm-hmm. Or there's so much stealing, or not stealing, poaching from companies that your resume may look like every year you work at a different place and then when you talk to someone they want to know why yes great question my resume looks like that uh in the first few years i mean i i I never stuck anywhere for more than two years Mm -hmm. i mean and and uh what i say is that listen i i i have goals my goals look like this and I mapped out what a career path looks like with the help of some, some mentors. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm on that path right now. Uh, and I have achieved all of my goals and I'm going to continue to, to work at a high level and achieve those goals. And they might say, well, okay, so you want to be a supply chain coordinator and you're applying for uh, an inventory manager position. Clearly, this is not your last stop. So why should I give you this job if I know you're going to leave in two years? Um, that's a tough one, you know, because I've told I've told lots of jobs. I'm going to be I'm going to be here forever. Yeah, I, I've, I've used the line of like. Of I just really want a place I could retire from. I want to put some roots down. Mm-hmm. In all honesty. Yeah, I wanted to say that just be honest with them and tell them you're only going to be there for two years, but I, People, I, gotta, I, I, I can't, I can't like bypass behavior, right? Like I gotta, I gotta represent what I do. I don't do that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't tell people that I'm going to be gone in two years or four years or five years or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm here. I'm going to give it my all. Let's do this thing. Are you have me? You have me. All right. I, because I've, I've, uh, had that question brought up of like, you've jumped, it seems like you, you've left a lot of places. It's like, not because like, because I wanted to, it's because like startups are incredibly hard. Oh my God. Yes. And as soon as there's trouble in the water, I fucking, was the you know early in my career i'm like all right i'm fucking out of here that's smart uh you know you look at my resume the first slaughter place i worked at fucking closed the uh manager position at the number one butcher shop in america fucking closed that uh uh processing plant i helped build in san diego fucking closed that place we both worked at fucking closed so it's not like in all before that happened, I could tell what was happening because numbers weren't matching up because people changed their business model or people got greedy or people wanted to save costs by cutting labor down and overworking people. 
that I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm out of here. And like now I have these awkward conversations years later with people and I can't explain any of that to them. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's like, this is just me venting. I don't know what the lesson is, but. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can relate to all that. Yeah. So what I put on my resume is when, or not resume, because you wouldn't put this on your resume when I'm in that interview phase and they're like, why does one, I reworked my resume. So, uh, and I'm not going to tell you what it says, but it kind of lumps in a bunch of that shit. Um, but if you want to know what it says, uh, give me and David money and we'll we'll share our resumes with that. Um, but well, I use the phrase upward mobility that why did you leave this position because i was offered more money to do the same work is another reason i've only for the last you know 15 years every job i have made has made or job i've taken has made uh a, like it's always made more money <laughs> You know, so it's like, why did you leave? Because someone offered me more money to do a, a job that I'm good at. Yeah, I, I think I think that's I think that that's a, a good a good honest answer. Another one that I like is I completed all my goals there. Mm-hmm. I I did everything that I wanted to do at that place. I mastered what I wanted to master, and I was done. So here I am. Yeah, and then. We're we're getting off the topic of resume, and I think we're just getting into like how do you look for a job and all this this stuff, which is fine. Uh, but like, you get into these these things, and like you fill out this things like all right, apply online, and then you have to fill out every single fucking thing that's on your resume, like list your five jobs. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, could we contact these people? And it's like I've left I've left companies where they may blame their collapse on the fact that I left. So they probably won't say the best things about me. You know, some companies I left and I was brutally honest of like, why are you leaving? Because I don't feel you treat workers well. And I feel like I'm being used. And you're just probably going to call me a pussy as soon as I leave. And they're closed now anyway. So it's like, why would you what would talking to a failed businessman have to do with whether or not I did that job at the time I was there? Yeah. So how, how have you had to handle that but right now? I think we're both in a position where with getting work that we're bypassing those channels of conventional applying for jobs and things like that. But what's the recommendation for <clears throat> someone in that in that that boat? Like you left and then they closed. Like you left, or they'd be like, "Can we contact this this person at this job you had?" And you know, because every job you you like me, it's like I was leaving jobs for other jobs, and if anyone wanted to contact, they'd be like, "No, that guy fucking left and kind of fucked us over." Yeah, I mean. Which I wouldn't say I, I did that to anybody, but like my, you know, I, I either list a contact at the company that, that had an accurate, well, had, had, a, had a, what I, what I would consider to be an accurate perception of our working relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, or you just don't list that. I mean, if you fucked up, not you, but like one, if, if mm-hmm. one fucks up. If it's bad enough that if somebody calls them and they're just like, absolutely not, no way. Like if there's no, if, if the person, if the person they contact can find no redeeming quality of you, Mm -hmm. it might be best to just call a spade a spade and throw that one, throw the baby out with the bathwater on that one. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Those places. Listen, I walked out of a job one time in Seattle. I was a line cook at a diner. Mm Mm-hmm. Under covers every morning, and there was just one day where I was being screamed at by the sous chef, and I was making a fucking Mickey Mouse pancake on a flat top grill, and I was like, "How 
this is not the path that I set. How did I get here? Sounds like fine dining. Oh, dude. Wait, did I say fine dining? No, I'm just, I'm being oh. facetious. Yeah. It was, oh, dude, it was a diner. Oh, my God. Um, but I wanted to be a short order cook, but. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 like, walked. Just, it, it was awesome. Yeah, but obviously you wouldn't put that on your resume because, one, it has nothing to do with what you do. But, like, I had a boss tell me, like, uh, you know, um, yeah, I, uh, I understand. I'll give you a good letter of recommendation and all that stuff because I was leaving this company because I, uh, and it was amicable. And then I later found out that he called me a fucking snowflake. So it's like, why would I want anyone to call that guy? Yeah, yeah that's not going to work. Um, and yeah. Also, David, but looks like we're going on another ad break here. Just want to remind you guys in the meat block that if you need personal coaching, life advice, that David and I are here and you can contact us through the uh, contact information in the show notes. If you're looking for a change in life or you're just looking for uh, tangible information to apply this to your everyday life, Please let us know. All right, David Zarlin's back. I did. I did the thing with the stove again. Weird. What are you cooking? I'm just trying. I'm trying to boil some pasta. Weird. Just a second batch. What are you European? It's like ten o'clock at night. I know. I'm. 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 It's a carbohydrates. I'm having a hard time giving them up. Mm. Uh. I was going to say you walked out on that lion cook, but also you took a vacation to Michigan and never came back too, but we never talked about that on the show. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oof. What a, what a wild time that was. I think that's a much better story too, but it may be a little bit too close to s- something. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. I feel like all those people... Edit that out. Um, all right. Uh, and we're back. And we're farts. Um, so, yeah, I really should have started a timer so we could. I, I hate that Zoom doesn't timestamp. Yeah. That is, that is very strange. But what was I going to say? Okay. Clap. Let's close out this show by. What 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 are the takeaways from what we talked about that people could use to because we talked about a lot and then we also went on tangents, which I feel like were conducive to the conversation. <clears throat> uh but what are the takeaways that people could apply to themselves right now? Bullet points. Yeah, right now. Um, okay, you want to leave your job. You want to expand your skill set. Maybe, maybe you don't want to expand shit. You just want to have a new job. Mm-hmm. Um, cover letter. Honest. Connect with them. Be a real person. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. Complete sentences. Take the time to have somebody freaking proofread it. That's fine. You don't have to be the poet laureate. Find someone that can write really well. Tell them what you wanted to say. Put it together. One paragraph. Four or five sentences. Here's what I do. Here's who I am. Here's why I'm stoked. Here's what I can do for you. Then the resume. Contact info. Um, one little opening thing to acknowledge that you that that you wrote their name in in the greeting, right? Like I'm I, PJ's custom meets. I'm so stoked because of this and this and this. Uh, I think it'd be a great fit. Here is uh, here's a list of the, th- the relevant things that I do and that I'm an expert in or that I've been learning or that I'm enthusiastic about that will benefit you. Now here's my work experience. Here are the specific things that I achieved while I was there or that I had ownership over and was competent at. Don't list it if you know what it is and you've never operated it. Like, if you're competent, list it. 
Mm-hmm. But don't, you know, don't like, don't be the person on the kill floor that's responsible for cleaning the pens and unloading the animals for the next day and call yourself a humane handling expert specialist. <laughs> I mean, like, Instead, I would say, you know, was responsible for checking in all animals with, you know, producers, had a good rapport with producers and, uh, you know, implemented and operated our robust systematic approach to humane handling. Just like be honest about what you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think three, three jobs that are relevant and within a reasonable amount of time is enough. Don't list seven jobs. Because if there's that one job that's at the end where you made those things and they were a specific skill, put that in the summary at the top. Don't create a whole other job to read through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You can be creative with that to keep it as succinct as possible. I love your idea of a one pager if it's possible, you know. And And there's templates out there that are easy to use that allows you to create text blocks and then fit that information onto that page. So you're not tabbing and typing and spacing and returning and all that shit that like, you know, like I said, that the first resumes that we did was in Microsoft word and it was making it look like I spent, more time trying to figure out how to create margins and borders and headers and all that shit than I did filling out the, the substance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Use a template or ask somebody that's good with word. Mm -hmm. Um, and just get your personality on there and and your skills and be honest. And, uh, you know, Spark a conversation. That's the other thing. Like, make them want to call you and then be great on the phone, you know, and then then do a great interview, which is like, you can tell people that, like, don't, that, that like, don't really want a job or, like, that don't care, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I talk to them and I'm just like, <laughs> see ya, you know, like, never. Um. Uh, I have some great stories about people I've interviewed. Yeah. It's straight up like, uh, what's the best one? Um, this guy, he felt it was like a point in the interview to tell me that he never touched the kids. And I was like, whoa, how did we get to this place? That you have to specify that you're not a child molester. <laughs> it had to do because he worked at the zoo and ran the carousel. But he's like, yeah, but we, you know, I didn't like touch the kids or anything. No shit. I'm like, whoa, this can be a pass for me, my man. And I have notoriously hired many felons and I will continue to, uh, cause I believe in second opportunities. Uh, and uh, if you pay your debt, but that's just my personal belief or my yeah. personal uh, thing. Yeah. What what I'm looking for, David, uh, is like a few, like two years ago, I was putting on my Dickies vest and there's a piece of paper in it. I was like, what the fuck is this? And it's like gone through the wash a couple of times a printed copy of your resume you sent to me. Oh yeah. Years ago. And I think I just folded it back up and put it back in that jacket pocket that's hanging somewhere in my attic. That's awesome. Yeah. Um well we didn't do meat news this week. I got positive feedback on it, but there's something I wanted to do with it. But I want to hear your, I don't know, positive affirmations, your songs, your recipes, your, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
man, let's let's talk albums. Um, let's see. It's it's been like nonstop Thundercat at my house. Mm. Yeah, his album Drunk, and then his other one. Uh, I think it's it is what it is. He's got this song called Dragon Ball Do Rag, and it's so good. It's really. So- yeah, he's he's like an incredibly talented musician. It's super funky and and really technical and and uh, but also funny and lighthearted. Thundercat, Dragon Ball Do Rag. Start with that song. That's the one. Okay. It's it's a little it's it's a little sexy. Not gonna lie, but so you know that's how I like pre-op to be. Honestly. A little sexy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do. I do. Uh, yeah. Only wear my rubber boots and my smock. Nice. I like it. I posted a photo of me when I worked at a slaughterhouse today that I got censored, so I took it down because uh, I don't want it to fuck up my engagement numbers. Um, Because the monetization. Anyway, I uh, was wearing board shorts and a cutoff t-shirt and working on a slaughter floor. I, I, I was I was quite the looker. Um, I, there's. <clears throat> I don't think I don't think they let people do that anymore at that slaughterhouse. I don't, that slaughterhouse isn't around anymore. Uh, isn't it? Isn't it still standing, but with a different name? Yes, it is. Why did it, have you been there? No, I'm just aware of the operation. Okay. Why they don't. You're not allowed to wear cutoff sh- shirts. I love wearing cutoff shirts in slaughter. I understand it's not hygienic, um, but man, you just look cool as fuck. With yeah, a big yeah. old dip in your mouth, and it's just a huge one. Yeah, huge, huge dip and a huge boner. Um, my, I haven't had that much time to consume anything other than uh, these fucking projects I'm working on. Uh, I'm started making t-shirts that I'm selling. I don't want this to turn into an ad for it, but I, the reason I started making them is because one, I had wanted like all those websites and stuff. They take so much money and there's no good margin. So I just bought all the stuff and just having, a super fun, frustrating time getting it all to work. Yeah. Um. So that's something new that that I'm doing. There's a great podcast uh, that I'm listening to now that I recommend everyone to listen to. It's uh, called Behind the Insurrection, and it is about the um. Uh, what do you call it? The beer hall uh, putsch in uh, Nazi Germany or before Nazi Germany. And um, yeah, I think some people might find correlations uh, with modern day events. I don't know why, um, but I, I would recommend people check out Behind the Insurrection. It's just uh, stuff that I didn't know uh, that you know, the Third Reich um, or the Nazi Party had a failed attempt and then got it right eight years later. Eight? Yeah. Wow. So um, I'm viewing it as like, wow, this is this is crazy. Who would have thought like these guys weren't punished hard enough to detour them? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's going to be really... That's going to be really interesting reading that in the newspaper in whatever language it is that the newspaper is written on in the country that I live in. Yeah. At that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, has nothing to do with current events. It's just nope. so. This I don't know. Dan Carlin also did a good uh, podcast this week too. So. Yeah. But let's let's end on a mean higher note, David. What what pasta? What carbs are you eating? And then we'll get out of here on that. 
Um, I'm having ramen. Nice. Top ramen, huh? No, not top ramen. I killed some pigs for somebody up the road, and uh, they gave me some bones. Mm. I made ramen broth, and I got some uh, some buckwheat noodles in there. And... Nice. I want to talk. Well, I'm going to stop recording. All right, bye, everybody. See you guys. This is me, Plock. And... Uh, stop recording.